Hello, I'm Millie. I am a physiotherapist and I have been working in the NHS and in the private sector over the last seven years. And I'm Lynn, and I had a hip replacement about three years ago because of my arthritis. So today we're going to be taking you through a set of exercises that you can do for your hip. You can do them before or after your hip replacement surgery. All of the exercises you can do at home and we're going to take you through the easiest ones first and then up through to the harder ones. And why is it so important to do exercise both before and after your surgery? It's a good question. So before the surgery, it's really important to do your exercises because it helps to get you fit in your heart and your lungs. You also want to make sure that you've got nice, strong muscles around that joint. It helps you to maintain your range of movement and those two things together can actually reduce your pain. Also, it's going to help to lift your mood and it's also going to benefit your general fitness, so your heart and your lungs, which is going to be really beneficial during the surgery. After the surgery, we really want you to regain your movement and your strength so that you can get back to the things that you love to do. But what about if it really hurts to do the exercises? So if it hurts doing your exercises, the first thing that is most important is that you need to listen to your body and adapt the exercises to do them in a way that works for you. If you're doing your exercises and it's painful and that lingers for more than half an hour once you've finished, then just come back to the exercises next time and reduce them down a little bit, make them a little bit easier. But if you are having problems with pain, then do speak to your healthcare professional to see what advice they can help you with. So the first exercise is called a glute squeeze. So the glutes are the muscles in your bottom and it's really important that we get them strong because they are big muscles that help to support your hip. So the first one that we're going to do is getting you onto the sofa or on your bed nice and safely. And then we're going to be squeezing your bottom muscles together and holding for between five to 10 seconds. As you get a bit more advanced, you can also do this in standing. So get yourself safely on the sofa or in your bed. You're going to hold on, lower yourself down, bring one leg up, and then you can use your hand to help with the other leg if you need to. When you're comfortable, maybe with a pillow behind you, sitting here, you're going to just squeeze your bottom muscles together and hold. Then you're going to relax and then repeat. So here, squeezing your bottom muscles together, holding for five, four, three, two, one, and then release. And again, five, four, three, two, one, and release. And again, five, four, three, two, one, release. And again, five, four, three, two, one, release. And again, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Perfect, how did that feel, Lynn? It feels absolutely fine. I think there's a temptation to hold your breath as well, okay. which presumably you're not meant to do. Yeah, definitely make sure that you're taking nice breaths during the exercises because breathing, it delivers the oxygen to the muscles and that helps you to gain strength. This next exercise is for the muscle at the front of your leg, so the quadricep muscle. The first one that you're going to do is take something like a rolled up towel and you're going to pop it underneath your knee so that you have a small bend in your knee. You're going to push your knee down into the towel as hard as you can and you might notice that your heel comes off of the bed. You're going to hold this for between five to 10 seconds and then repeat. To progress this exercise, you're going to take the towel out from your knee. You're going to push your knee down into the bed in the same way so that your leg is straight. And then you're going to lift the whole leg up to the ceiling and then back down. You can also bring your foot up towards you and then lift the leg up to make it a little bit harder. Shall we give that a go, Lynn? Sure. Okay, so first one, pushing the knee down into the towel. And we're holding for five, four, three, two, one. Release. And again, five, four, three, two, one. Release. Again, five, four, three, two, one release. Again, five, four, three, two, one, release. And again, five, four, three, two, one. Great. 
This time take the towel out from underneath your knee, push your knee down into the bed and then lift your legs straight up into the air. Good. And down. And up. Back down. Up. And back down. Up. Back down. Up. And back down. Great. How do you feel? That feels absolutely fine. Again, I have to remind myself to breathe, not hold my breath. Mm -hmm. um, and I do find it uh, is also, I can feel it exercising my core muscles here. Perfect. Good. Good. The next exercise is a movement exercise for your knee and for your hip. Lying in the bed, you're just going to bring your heel up towards your sit bone as far as you can go and then take it back away from you. If you want to make this harder, you can actually bring the heel up towards you and then hug your knee in towards your body. And if you feel like it's more comfortable, you can do this lying completely flat as well. So just sliding that heel up towards you and away. Good. Bring it in and away. In and away. In and away. In and away. Perfect. How does that feel? Absolutely fine. Um, you'd do them all on one side and then on the other, would you, rather than alternating? So you can do them all on one side or you can do them alternating, whichever you prefer. So this next exercise is a gentle exercise for the hip. You're going to sit yourself on the sofa or in bed comfortably and you're just going to slide that leg, keeping the knee straight, out away from you and then bring it back in. If you want to make this exercise harder, then you can come into side lying on the bed or the sofa with your side that you're exercising up to the ceiling. And you're going to lift that leg straight up to the ceiling and then bring it back down. And bring your leg away from you and then bring back in, away, bring back in away, back in, away, back in, away, and back in. Perfect, how does that feel? It feels absolutely fine. Perfect, so this is a really nice one for the muscles in your hip and in your glutes. So when you repeat it, you should start to feel it in there. So our next exercise is called a bridge exercise. It's a really nice one for the muscles at the front of your leg and also in your glutes. So you're going to bring yourself either to your bed or your sofa, or if you're safe to do so, you can do this on a mat on the floor. You're going to bring yourself down into lying on your back. Bend your knees and bring your heels as close to your bottom as you can get them and turn your hands up to the ceiling. Then you're going to lift your hips up to the ceiling and then lower yourself back down. So bending your knees, heels as close to your bottom as you can get them, and then lifting your hips up to the ceiling. And down. And up. Back down. Up. And back down. Lifting up. Keep breathing the whole way through these exercises and back down, lifting up and back down. And then come back up into sitting. Good. And how did you feel those ones went, Lynn? Fine. I can feel they're quite strenuous. Yeah. Yes. Working front and back actually. Yeah. Perfect, yeah, they're a really good one for the glute muscles and for the quad muscles and they're really going to help to support your hip and get you stronger. So this exercise is called a hip extension exercise which means that we're taking the leg back behind us. So make sure for this one you're either holding on to the back of a chair 
the table or something like the kitchen counter, but just make sure that it's not going to wobble underneath you and it's sturdy if you put some support onto it. So with your hands on the support, you're going to take one leg back behind you and then bring it back in to meet the other one. So we'll do that together then. So you're going to take that leg back and in, back and in, back, in, back, in, back, and in. How does that feel? It feels fine. Um, I can tell that it's doing some work on the other leg at the same time. Perfect, yep. Yeah. So this exercise does do both legs at the same time. By you standing on one and moving the other, it strengthens them in slightly different ways. These next exercises are a little bit more difficult. They're fine for you to do before your operation, but after you've had your surgery, just make sure that the physio and the surgeon are happy for you to get started with them. Always listen to your body and just don't push through lots of pain. So our next exercise is the squat exercise. So standing at something that is sturdy and not going to topple if you hold on, you're going to stand with your legs or your feet just a little bit wider than hip width and you're going to come down holding on into your squat and then coming up, squeezing your bottom muscles together like you did in the first exercise. As you get a bit stronger, we can do this without holding on and coming back up. So should we do this together, Lynn? Yes. Okay, so going down and up, down and up, down, up, down, up, down, and up. Perfect, how did that feel? It's, it's fine, but I do need to hold on by about number four and five. Yes. Which I guess will get better. Yes, that is normal. So as you get stronger and you practice your squats, you'll find that you can then start to take your hands off. Our next exercise is the lunge exercise. So you're going to do this holding onto something sturdy next to you. You're going to step one foot forwards in front of you and then come down by bending both legs and then back up again. If you find that this is easy and you want to make it harder, you can do that by not holding on. You can either have your hands on your hips or out in front of you. You're going to come down into your lunge and then come back up and then step back. You can do this on both sides to make sure that you're strengthening both legs in the same way. Should we do this together, Lynn? Yeah. So step one foot forwards coming down into your lunge. So down and back up, down, back up, down and up, down, up, down and up. Perfect. How did that feel? I can feel it working both legs, definitely. Perfect. Certainly the, this one in the front. Good, so it's a good exercise for both of your legs and it works the quads really hard. So our next exercise is a balance exercise. What we're going to do is standing at something that is sturdy, so it could be your chair or your table again. You're going to be lifting up one leg but holding on. You can start by holding on and putting some weight down through your hands and as you get better at your balance you can then go to just fingertips on the table or the chair and then you can go to just one finger on each hand then eventually you can go to just standing with no hands at all. We can start by practicing this between one to 10 seconds. And as you get better, we can aim to get up to 30 seconds with your hold. So then let's give it a go. Mm -hmm. So holding on, standing on one leg, and we're going to hold for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Great. How was that? It feels fine. Um, I, yes, I do need this. And uh, also, again, I can feel something going on in the supporting leg. Um, I understand it's also helpful to think upwards as if the top of your head is stretching up towards the ceiling. Good, perfect. So making sure that you're keeping your body nice and strong and not letting yourself just hunch over is good. So this exercise is a step up exercise. You can do this on your stairs at home and you can hold on to your railing or the wall to give you some support if you do need it. So for this one, come up to the step and you're going to put your foot onto the step. Make sure your whole foot is on the step and it's not partially hanging off. So then step yourself up 
and then with the same leg that stepped up you're going to step that one back down so that this one stays on the step up and back down okay mm -hmm. let's give that a go Lynn good so we're going up and back down up and back down up down up and down up and down great okay how did that feel that feels pretty simple but i guess that if you've got a taller step it gets harder that's exactly right yeah so if it is harder and you have a deeper step then you can hold on to the railings or something that you have nearby like the wall to give you some support and make sure that you do this on both sides as well well done everybody you worked really hard on those exercises now it's time to have a break and recuperate and definitely get yourself some water so that you can rehydrate. Lynn, how did you feel doing those exercises? Fine, they felt very doable, um, you know, fairly simple. I may feel an, uh, an, some kind of an impact tomorrow or the day after maybe, but actually doing them felt fine. Good. And can you think of any time as to when you might incorporate these exercises into your daily routine? Yes, um, it occurred to me that while I'm doing my teeth, I can be standing on one leg, for example, um, and also if I'm in the kitchen just waiting for the kettle to boil, um, or even maybe while I'm washing up, uh, there's no particular reason why I shouldn't just stop and do a few squats or something, I guess. Thank you so much for that, Lynn. So make sure that you carry on with doing your exercises before and after your surgery. They are really important to make sure that you keep yourself fit and strong and that's going to contribute to you staying independent and also being able to get back to the goals and the things that you really enjoy. If you do have any questions then you can always speak to your healthcare professional for some advice with your exercises. And also do go and check out the surgery toolkit on Versus Arthritis too, as that has got lots of information to help you before your surgery. Keep going with your exercises, take care and good luck. <laughs>